What's going on guys? Welcome back to the NVM channel. Yes, that's right, another new car added to our fleet. So I did say added to the fleet, but not quite. This is a car we've been waiting for for a very long time. For the B-roll. Yes, that's right, it's a 2017 BMW M140i. It's an eight-speed auto vehicle, and it's got some tasty mods too. This has to be the cheapest M140i in the country, and you can probably figure out why we bought this one. So yes, the update you guys have been waiting for, we have now acquired our donor vehicle for the E46 Touring Project. This is probably the biggest reason as to why we haven't given an update. We did have another engine, but unfortunately, it wasn't the best engine, was it? It had low compression in one of the cylinders, so we had to scrap that idea and look for a new engine. Every other engine we looked for on the market didn't have any sort of history with it and no associated VIN. So it was very difficult for us to kind of confirm the validity of a genuine engine. The great thing about this vehicle is it's an NVM Stage 2 Plus car. The previous owner owned it for about five years and it's been serviced and maintained by us meticulously. So we know the history of the car. We know the engine's good. Unfortunately, he has had a bump in it but he walked away without a scratch, which is always good news. But the first thing we've got to do is pull this engine out and put it in the E46. So with the dummy engine now out, we can put the genuine real deal in. This is an NVM Stage 2 Plus car, as I said, so it's got a B58 TU pump, it's got a high flow down pipe, it's got a charge pipe that's probably taken the brunt of the impact that it had, although everything else is straight and true. There are a few things that we do need to change over and we've got to strip off the wire harness and figure out what we're doing with engine and turbo coolant, which is probably going to be the biggest task today. So now we've got the full donor vehicle, it makes it easier for us to do the conversion. As I said, it's probably one of the biggest pieces of the puzzles missing, only because there's not much documentation out there of anyone doing a conversion like this. So having everything there is key to getting this conversion looking and fitting right. Now with the dummy engine out, we can transfer over the gearbox to the donor engine, meaning that we have to take the ZF8 gearbox off the original and transfer everything over. We've got brackets and stuff that we need to make for the gear linkage and the transmission mounting bracket. Um, but other than that, we can kind of get it in today, set up and position all the ancillaries, especially because we're doing an aircon delete on there. So we've got to take the pump off and we're going to run a different crank hub and belt system too. As with any project like this, it's always going to be a bit of trial and error. The good thing is we did have a donor engine already to fabricate all the engine mounts, the clearance, the subframe and also the prop length. So it should be a pretty straightforward task today. Although we do have to worry about the ancillaries and where they are going to mount in terms of the space that we have available. So yeah, let's crack on, see what we can do. So wiring has to be the most difficult part of this conversion. It runs a BMW MG1 EC from factory. So there's a lot of wires, a lot of sensors and a lot of connectors that need to marry up to some sort of standalone ECU so we can make it work with the E46 OEM CAN system. So yeah, we're gonna strip off all the wiring, go through all labels and see if we can work something out and make a patch harness to work with the OEM system. So yeah, we've got this to take off, the charge pipe, we've got a few other parts that need taken off and it's gotta come off the subframe and we've gotta test fit our brackets on there before we get it inside. <laughs> 
So that's the aircon pump now taken off. As I said, we've got to manufacture a blank pulley so that we can still use the same length belt and the same sort of routing. Um, obviously that comes with the aircon condenser, which routes into the OEM charge cooler system for the turbocharger. So we've got to figure out what we're going to do about the routing of that and how to maintain good flow through the charge cooler system. And that's the AC delete that we've kind of put together. This will free up some power as well because the aircon obviously saps a bit of power being the friction pump that it is. Um, we've got a alternator tensioner to replace and also a new, brand new water pump before we can get this car started. Now, one of the biggest issues about a project car like this is we're starting and stopping work on the vehicle. As you can see, we've made an adapter plate for the rear diff. Yes, it's utilizing the OEM rear diff for now. We will be going with a different variant at a later time. I just want to get the car ready and prepped so that we've got full drive, engine started, coolant's working, everything else is set up. We still have to tackle the fuel and the fuel pump. Now within the tank, obviously there's many different options for the E46 being like the same as a E46 M3. So we can upgrade the pump quite easily, but controlling that fuel on a car that's previously like the M140, has got a PWM relay that adjusts the voltage for the amount of fuel pressure required is quite difficult because these run a standard kind of fuel pressure regulator at the end of the filter. So I've got no idea what we're gonna do about that, but that is all still work in progress. As I said before, we've got to fabricate some sort of linkage for that beautiful short shifter that we've got to maintain some sort of control for the gearbox. Now, again, there's no easy way of doing a conversion like this. It is very much trial and error. Engine comes in, engine goes out many times before we can get something going. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be interesting. It has started chucking it down already outside. So we need to get off whatever else we need off that M140 and uh, get cracking. So we have mocked up a prop shaft combining both the B58 F series variant and the E series variant. But again, this is kind of work in progress. It's not gonna be something that's finite yet until we get full power and drive through the vehicle. This car, again, there's so many builds that you could do to an E46 and we probably chose the hardest one. Yes, no doubt this car is gonna be absolutely epic when completed, but there's other stuff that we need to factor in in part of this build, mainly being the power steering. On the B58 or M140, it's an electronic steering rack that doesn't fit at all within the front clip of this E46. So we have done a power steering delete for now. And again, we have to figure out what we are gonna do in terms of adding some assistance to that steering mechanism. Um, engine bay has been cleaned up to the best of our ability and we can start looking at where we need to make some clearance changes. Um, but apart from that, I think uh, we're ready to combine both the engine and gearbox, get it in and fabricate what we need. There are so many parts to this project and upgrades are imminent too. The standard 318i brakes are not gonna cope with the power that it's gonna have. But for all of that, you guys have to hit that subscribe button, smash that thumbs up. Otherwise, we're not gonna give any more updates, are we? Now, as I said, this car was an NVM Stage 2 Plus car, so it's got a B58 TU high pressure fuel pump already on there. Uh, we might turn out this, change out the turbocharger, um, but we'll try and get it run on a base setup first before we start adding more power. Um, so yeah, let's get this up in the air. Gearbox is off. Transfer over the gearbox mount, uh, engine mount, sorry, and uh, let's get it inside the E46. So as I said, this is an eight-speed auto car and we're utilizing the six-speed manual because we have to save the manuals, right? So the torque converter and the flywheel or starter ring has to come off first. Um, so starter motor has to come off, all of that off, and then we can get it in the car. Look how light the steering wheel is. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> It's actually such a shame. It's a beautifully spec car. Harman Kardon, Pro Nav, electric heated seats. And it's got the best option, man. Look at this. It's got curtains. How many M140s have got curtains? I think it's such a shame that we only use the engine out of this M140i. Don't you think? 
So looking at the engine bay of the M114, now that the engine is out, there's a few things that we did not factor in. A being the voltage system, the relays for the fan, both the starter motor, and also the coolant to engine. So working on the HVAC system, trying to get that to work and operate with an engine swap like this is gonna be a mean task. Other than that, pretty straightforward, isn't it? I think the biggest issue is going to be clearance, especially for the engine mounts. So we might have to manipulate or change the location of the OEM turbocharger, uh, but we won't know until we put it in. This is not a DIY guide. This is not a how-to. This is me trying to fit an M140i engine into an E46. So don't ask me how I'm going to do it. And just like that, we have a B58 engine finally in our E46 Touring. Absolute savage, gearbox is on, prop is on, gear linkage has now been fabricated as well. There's a whole lot of work left to do in terms of working out what we're gonna do with the charge cooler, the engine radiator, and also the wiring. Don't you think it'll be really cool if we put a different engine in this M140i? Leave a comment below if you guys want to see that happen. But for now, I hope you guys enjoyed today's E46 Touring update. Don't forget to like, smash that thumbs up button, and leave a comment below as to what engine we should put in this M140i. Yeah? If you cast for the road or tracks, Mexico on the lanes, or Dunnington doing up laps. Car man, I got maps, doing up maps, maximum power, can't get gaps. They got tuners, we got tuners, but they're tuners. But they're tuners, a load of Man got the map, what kind of map? Best boat map, that's this lap. Zoom in, pass, don't watch how big man map three maps. Take a passenger seat, watch a man collapse. Foot to the floor, rev to the max, team got through like axe. All you see is flames, all you hear is bullets and bats. He's doing it well, he's doing it right, and they can't do it like man. NV Motorsport is in the game. Gang.